Alright guys, how you guys doing? In this video I'm going to give you a review of the new MacBook Pro 15 inches, of course the early 2011 versions. I have here the 2.0 quad core i7, 4 gigs of RAM, 500 GB hard drive with the AMD 6490M. And yes, this is the baseline 15 inch MacBook Pro. Absolute beast of a machine. It quotes up to 7 hours of battery life. I've kind of managed to make my way up to that mark. Again, it depends on what you do, how many things you're running, if you're running Wi-Fi, if you're running Bluetooth, how high is the brightness. It all depends on that, but generally with every Apple notebook or iDevice, I've managed to get what they've quoted, which is of course good. The entire MacBook Pro range has gone a fantastic bump internally, great speedy performances right across the board, right from a 13 inch, 15 inch and up to 17 inch is a monster. They've dropped one of the 15 inch lines trying to make it a bit more compact, but of course not compact enough because the MacBooks still live. I guess we'll find out soon as to what to do with the MacBooks. In terms of specking up your machine at checkout, the only change I would recommend you making or addition I'd recommend you making is purchasing Apple Care. It is fantastic, works out great over the three years of coverage that you've got. Outstanding service and I've had nothing but good experiences with them. Apart from that, hardware upgrades, I would recommend you do it yourself. If you want to install more memory, you can do it yourself. You can buy cheaper memory, quality memory at cheaper prices than what Apple offer. And installation is a breeze, I've made a video on it. Same with the hard drive, Apple do offer 7200 RPM hard drives and SSDs. I don't know why they haven't got 7200 RPM stock. Um, and why they've chose to go with 5,400 RPM. Obviously, it's lower powered and lower, beefier. Does that make sense? So, if you want to install SSD, although Apple offer SSD, I've heard from other people that the, the performance isn't as good as you would if you pay uh, or buy it yourself and install it yourself. Obviously, if you look around, you will get cheaper prices in quality brands. So, it's worthwhile checking out. One of the most annoying updates for this MacBook Pro is the display option. Uh, the standard display on this is glossy. So, if you're watching a film or you got this on the desk, you are going to see reflections. There is no doubt about it. Is it annoying? I mean, if you're going to be doing a lot of photo work, if you're a professional, you're a photographer or a video guy, you already know which display you're going to go for. You're going to go for the anti-glare, which is going to cost you £120, which is a joke. Uh, this thing should have been free. My MacBook Air performs much, much better when it comes to display. By performance, I mean it's much nicer to look, it's easier to the eyes, it's more, an, it's a more enjoyable experience. When I come onto the MacBook Pro, I look at that reflection, I'm like, man, what on earth is this? So, I mean... If you're not going to be doing video or photo work, stay with the glossy. You won't probably mind it that much, but if you're going to be using this quite a lot, then it's something to consider at £120. In terms of performance of the machine, I've done gaming tests. I've tried Assassin's Creed 2, which works absolutely flawlessly. If you haven't seen that video, click on the screen annotation and it will take you directly to the gaming test. Specifically, in terms of speed tests and comparing it with other Macs, I've compared the MacBook Pro to my other two Macs that I've got, a MacBook Air and an iMac. To see what kind of speed difference there is, if any, click on the screen and you can go directly to that video to check out what the exporting times are like in iMovie and ScreenFlow. But in general guys, the MacBook Pro 2011 is absolutely beastly inside. And what I mean by that is it's fantastic inside. Of course, there were a lot of rumours prior to this refresh that the MacBook Pro is going to go an external redesign, liquid metal, lighter machine, a 15-inch MacBook Air I would have loved. The removal of the SuperDrive was another big famous rumour. But of course, externally, we did not see any changes, and I doubt we're going to see anything earliest uh, next year, 2012. In terms of port allocation, you've got all the ports on the new MacBook Pro on the left-hand side of the machine. So on the top, you've got the power cable. Next to that, you've got Ethernet. Next to that, you've got Firewire. Next to that, you've got a new port called Thunderbolt, which is incredibly fast. To put it into perspective, it works kind of similar to USB 2 and Firewire, other than it's super amazing, 20 times faster than USB 2, which is insane, and up to 12 times faster than Firewire 800. Needless to say guys, that is pretty darn amazing. Apple has exclusive rights to this until 2012. That said, Lacey are bringing out a hard drive, which is going to be Light Peak compatible, which is going to be pretty soon. They've put a PR release out there, so it can't be too far away. And just yesterday, Canon have announced they're going to bring a camcorder out, which is going to be light peak compatible, which is insane. And especially for all you pro guys out there, taking footage and then transferring it onto this new bad boy, aka the MacBook Pro, is going to be a more breeze of an experience, let's just say. 
Next to the light peak port, you've got two USB ports, USB 2 of course, they can't do away with the USB 2 right now, but I imagine in the future it's going to get phased out once light peak gets momentum. And also, uh, light peak, the good thing is, if you've got an external hard drive connected via light peak, then you can daisy chain devices off that hard drive so you can attach a cinema display, uh, which is, of course, needless to say, pretty damn amazing daisy chaining devices. That's what I've always wanted to do. SD card reader next to the USB ports, and then you've got microphone and earphones. Now, maybe I'm just getting too comfortable with the MacBook Air, but I kind of like the MacBook Air port allocation better, hence why I brought it out. The MacBook Air's got two USB ports, one on each side, and you've got the mini display port as well. So I just like, you know, not everything's getting congested in the one bit as it is in the MacBook Pro. Uh, I'm liking, you know, the MacBook Air, and I guess why the MacBook Air has is because there's no super drive. In terms of audio and speaker performance, the new MacBook Pros do not disappoint one single bit. The audio out of these are absolutely gorgeous, much, much better than my MacBook Air. The two speakers are quite visible on the front, one on each side, whereas the MacBook Air ones are kind of hidden, but nevertheless, they're okay-ish, the MacBook Air ones. The MacBook Pro it takes it to the next level, stereo and built-in subwoofer, which needless to say is pretty damn awesome. Guys, just to sum it up, the MacBook Pro 2011 is a fantastic buy, very, very juicy update. This is, can be your primary machine, of course, insane if you don't think otherwise, but you are not going to be disappointed if you're holding it for a redesign this year, you, sir, are going to be disappointed. But guys, if you picked one up, if you've done gaming tests yourself, video tests yourself, what do you think? What are you thinking of specking up? What have you specced up? Have you just took delivery of one recently? What are your thoughts on it? Leave it in the comments below, guys. But other than that, guys, thanks for watching. Remember, you can join me on iglassregion.com, twitter.com slash i 6 Facebook.com slash iglassregion. And guys, I shall see you in another life. Cheers.